Hey guys! I picked up this new lathe a couple of weeks ago, but I haven't really had a chance to use it yet, mostly because I don't have a good spot for it. It's too tall to put on top of a regular workbench like this. So I drew up a set of plans for a lower, dedicated lathe bench, and it's time to start building. I started out by roughly drawing out all the parts on my sheets of plywood. This didn't have to be precise because I just needed it to get broken down into more manageable pieces. A sheet of plywood should have four straight edges, so as long as each of my pieces has one of these edges on it, it's easy to run that side against the fence and rip it down to the exact width on the table saw. Then I can use my radial arm saw to square off the workpiece, then cut it to final length. So most of this is going to be built out of this really nice three-quarter inch birch plywood that I found that actually came pre-finished, which is really nice. I'm going to like that for the top and the sides, but for the panels that I need to glue together, I actually have to sand off the finish. So we're going to have to uh, spend a little bit of time with the sander and rough it up just so that it'll glue together better. Well, because I really wanted these panels to be glued together well, uh, and I didn't have clamps that would clamp the center of them, I brought them in here and supported them from the center by this, uh, this is just an old motorcycle center stand that I built. And so now all of the weight is on the center of those panels, and then I stacked these three five gallon buckets of lead on top. So I would say that's roughly 250 pounds of lead weight stacked on the center of those. So we should be getting really, really good clamping pressure at this point. I guess we'll see tomorrow. So the next step is going to be to route out the rabbits for the sidewalls of this box. And in a completely boneheaded move, when I glued it together, I actually sunk the uh, pin nails right in the channel that I'm going to have to cut out. So, in order to get those pin nails back out, I just used a plug cutter to uh, dig around the head of the pin nail and then carefully used a chisel to pry away some material and then just grab the head of it with the pliers so I could pull it out. So, a little extra work, not a big deal. So the way this is going to work is I took this side wall and put it right in place on the edge of the bottom and then took a straight edge and put it right where that sidewall ends. Then I've got a pattern bit sitting in my router. There's some focus. And <clears throat> I put that piece of plywood on top because that's the thickness of the straight edge that it will ride on top of. And then that's a 3 8 inch uh, block on top of it to give me the height that I need to set the router bit to and that way I should end up with a perfect 3 8 inch rabbit cut into the bottom of this thing. So to do these three interior ones, uh, the process is very much the same. You just have to have a straight edge on both sides of it. So you get your first reference point lined up, marked out and perfect. And then you take a piece of the stock that you want it to fit and you just sandwich that in there with your other straight edge. and clamp it down. Then you can take that out and this should be in the right spot and the perfect width to fit the single vertical 
that'll go here and here, and then there'll be another dirt, double vertical in the center. Nice, tight fit. So now I've marked out and have to do the exact same process to the top, uh, the underside of the top. The difference being that there's going to be a two inch overhang all the way around this. So I kind of drew myself a darker warning line to stop there and not continue with the bit traveling all the way out to the edge. Um, so because this is hidden underneath, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna make it as close to it as possible. Now there's not enough surface on the outside of this cut uh, to clamp to, so I'm just going to go ahead and use my double-sided tape. And since I'm not putting much pressure against this straight edge, it's this will be plenty. Well, I did a dry fit. It's upside down right now, of course, but everything fits together just exactly the way I hope it would. Um, and I need to do a rabbit on the back so I can get the back piece to fit flush. So that's what that black line is about to tell me what, what more I have to cut out. But I'm going to take the three pieces off and get that rabbit in there and then I can start assembling this thing for, for good. To assemble everything, I started with it upside down and put glue in all of the grooves on the bottom piece. Then I ran screws through some pre-drilled holes into the vertical panels. Then I flipped it over and attached the top as well. Now the reason that I didn't glue the two top panels together beforehand was so that I could hide the screws that were holding the top to the base between the two layers of plywood. This left me with a top surface that was completely free from holes or screw heads. After using every clamp I had to tighten down the perimeter of the top, I ran some short screws up from underneath to pull the middle of the sheets together. I put the back panel on, starting with the pocket holes in the top. That way, the panel was pulled up tightly to eliminate any gap in the back. I didn't glue it on yet, just in case I needed to get access through it to install the drawers or other hardware. Well that about does it for part one of this build. I basically have a very sturdy box here that's going to be able to stand up to the weight of the lathe and any of the turnings that I'm going to do with it. So for part two, we're going to fill all these little cubbies in with drawers so I have lots and lots of storage space for different lathe supplies and for whatever miscellaneous junk I have laying around the shop because I'm seriously lacking in storage space right now. Um, we're also going to add some casters to the bottom of this to make it mobile and we're going to bolt the lathe on top and put this whole thing to bed. So. Come back next week and we'll finish it up. Thanks guys.